Hello students, today we are going to learn about concept attainment model. In schools, we learn many concepts and that is why this concept attainment is an important model. It is from information processing family. According to Jerome Bruner, generalization and categorization are general mental tendencies which help person to form concepts. Now, what is generalization? Generalization means finding out similarities among different objects. Now, Bruner says that they are ubiquitous mental tendencies. We have such mental processes right from the beginning, from birth. For that, he gives one example. He says, take a small child. Once we show him moon in the sky, even the small child, he will identify that it is moon in the, on the next day, even after month. Now, the size and shape of moon, it changes every day. The brightness also changes every day. But still he can identify because he is generalizing what is moon. In the same way, even a small child, infant we can say, he can differentiate between the thing, he can categorize because he identifies his mother with other family members. He identifies that our family members are different from strangers. That means, this generalization and differentiation, these are two mental tendencies which are right from the beginning and they are used to form our concepts. Brunner says that concept is basic tool of thinking. What does it mean? We will take one example. Now, just observe this box. If you want to describe this box, how will you describe? You may probably say that it is white in color, it has rectangular shape, it is a 3D object. Now, all these words that we are using to describe this box, white in color, white, then 3D, rectangular face. So, all these are nothing but concepts. So, just imagine a sentence without any concept, you probably would not be able to devise such sentence. That means, concepts are basic tools of thinking. When we are speaking, we are using several concepts and we are joining them to form a sentence, to give law, to give principle. In the same way, concepts reduce need of constant learning. Once we form a concept, we can use that particular name of the concept and go ahead. Say for example, if there is a big class and there are several chairs and all these different kind of furniture. If we ask any student to describe what is inside that classroom, he will say that there are chairs, there are tables, there are desks, there are chalks. He will not mention each and every chair because he has generalized. Once we say chair, no need to explain every object again and again. That means, once we form the concept, then it reduces the need of constant learning. We can go ahead with those concepts and express our thoughts with the help of those concepts. Now, we are talking about concepts, but what is a concept? Let us do one exercise. I have given here pictures of many animals. You just observe them and try to categorize them in different groups. 
Have you done that? Okay. You can categorize them in different ways on the basis of different criteria. But now, do another exercise. Now, I have marked some objects. Now, let us do another exercise. The same pictures are given, but now I have marked with tick mark some of them. So, observe all the animals with tick marks. What similarity can you find? Yes, you are very correct. They are all herbivorous animals. Even if they are different in other aspects, like they have different shapes, they have different colors, they have different uh, habitats, but still one thing is common and that is their food, food habit. So, herbivorous is a concept. So, concept means grouping the objects or incidents on the basis of some common quality in spite of some differences in them. Now, again there are certain examples. They are different in size, shape, color and test, yet they form a concept. What is it? You are very familiar with them. Yes, you are right, they are fruits. So, what is a fruit? Fruit is a concept. How can we define fruit? So, fruits are formed from flowers. They generally have sweet taste, sweet smell, certain fragrance. Usually, they are juicy. Of course, banana is different from fig, banana is different from mango. So, they have different taste, shape, color, size, yet they all can be categorized under one concept and that is fruit. So, now I think you are familiar with the term concept. Now, concepts are series of inferences. What does it mean? Series of inferences means you can draw many inferences from the term concept. Once you categorize something under fruit, then you can infer that it must have some sweet taste, it must be juicy, it cannot stay long, it is perishable. So, all these are inferences. Another thing is concepts are broader than example. Once you say fruit, others are examples, banana, fig, apple, all these are examples, but concept is broader. Now, say for example, apple. Apple is red in color, the skin is shiny, round in shape, but flattened at both ends and usually sweet in test. But at the same time, we can infer that it is edible, it is juicy. If it is kept for a long time, it will start decaying. In the same way, if we just cut and keep it open, exposed to the air, it will become red and then gradually it will become black. This means concept is broader than its definition. We can have many inferences implied in that term. Now, earlier we had seen that usually apple is red, etcetera, etcetera, but now just observe this slide. Now, you will have to change your opinion or your guess because you can see all the green apples, they are also apples. That means, 
the characteristic that we took into consideration in the beginning that apple must be red that we have to change. This means there are certain attributes or characteristics which are essential attributes and some are non-essential attributes. So, we have to find out essential attribute. So, the test etcetera that is essential attribute of apple, but red usually yes, but it is not the law or rule that every apple should be red. So, here come the concept of attributes. So, let us see what are attributes. So, what are basic elements of concept? There are attributes, attribute value, there are examples and finally, there is a specific name and definition. We will see one by one the attributes. Every object or event has many attributes. For example, if we see animals, now animals have size, shape, different colors, they have limbs, they have specific food habits, they live in different habitats, they have their own life processes. So, for specific concept, we have to consider specific attribute, herbivorous animal. So, there we will just concentrate on food habit. Land animal, where they are living, are they living on land, then they are land animals. Now, pets, whether we can keep them in our house, so that is pet animal. So, pets are all these are concepts which include certain animals having those attributes, but they can be definitely different in other aspects or attributes. So, now we have seen what is attribute. Attribute are just the characteristics and which specific characteristic we are taking into consideration that may be different from concept to concept. But Besides attribute, there is attribute value, the range, acceptable range of that particular attribute. Now, what is it? Let us see with one example. Now, if we see consider dogs, they have differences in size, Pomeranian may be very small, Alsatian may be big, but there is acceptable range to that attribute. So, dogs are not as small as squirrel and they are not at all as big as cows. So, there is acceptable range. All dogs may not have same size and shape, but there is acceptable range. So, that acceptable range is called attribute value. For each concept, there are many examples. Again, the same thing, the examples those examples which are having the same attribute, essential attributes and essential attribute value, they form the positive examples of the concepts. And if the essential attributes are missing, then they will be called as non-examples. So, dogs have many attributes, but barking is an essential attribute which makes dog different from cat, fox, etcetera. So, we have learnt about the meaning of concept, but the title of the model is concept attainment. So, what is that attainment? Attainment means finding out all the essential attributes of the concept, which differentiate examples from non-examples. So, here Brunner emphasizes attainment of concept, the student should be made to attain the concept. They should be given many examples and they should find out which are the essential attributes of that concept. 